Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us for our panel today. We're going to discuss uh, OTT and piracy in the Asia market. Uh, we have a broad range of perspectives up on the stage. Uh, also, just a quick plug, uh, tomorrow afternoon, if you're still around, because I know the last day of the show can be a little slow, I put out some flyers of an event we'll have in here. It'll be a workshop. Uh, Chris and I will be kind of hosting that, co-hosting that, I guess, right? And our, you know, so you're it'll be... I'm not. Huh? You're singing, I'm not. Yes, I'm singing. He's dancing. And, uh, but the goal there will be to kind of have a little bit more of an in-depth discussion. Uh, Dolby is going to make a presentation about HDR and Dolby Vision and uh, Dolby Atmos for next generation experiences. And our goal, no matter how many people are here, it's going to be more of an interactive discussion uh, as we kind of roll through a little bit of a deeper dive of what we're going to talk about today. So, but today we are here to discuss, uh, again, OTT and piracy. And um, it's been two years since we've been here in Sportsal Asia. So, Chris, um, just a quick introduction of yourself and New Line, and maybe uh, let's, just, let's just start with that. So, give people who may not be familiar with New Line. And Great. This is my first trip to Singapore. It's a nice short flight from New York, 22 hours. Uh, glad to be here. We, uh, New Line is a, a technology and a service company focused on the OTT space. Our clients are. Um, Companies that own content. We've done a lot of live events. We did about 63,000 live over the top events uh, last year with a lot of linear channels as well. Uh, and uh, been in business for over 10 years, focused on direct to consumer. So, Danny Mekin, you had a 12 hour flight, right? I think from Amsterdam? Yes, or? 12 hour flight. Yes. So, uh, it was much more convenient. <laughs> yes. Um, so, Danny Menke, I'm the group managing director for 11 Sports. Um, we are a sport broadcaster 2.0, I would say. So we are completely platform agnostic. Um, since two and a half years, we have been able to uh, start our businesses in now seven markets. Uh, Taiwan, Singapore, Poland, uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, Italy and the US. We reach over 80 million uh, households globally, of which around 20 million are now uh, paid. Um, so uh, again, I said uh, we are platform agnostic, so we really want to be there where the consumer is. So if he wants to see us on cable, DTH, IPTV, uh, on OTT, on, on Samsung, on Twitter, on Facebook, wherever, we are there for the consumer. Excellent. Great. Uh, we have it in New York City on Fios. I've watched your channel. In, the, in New York City, it's on the, on the Verizon Fios now. Yes. So it's yeah. That's very cool. Uh, Maurizio was here last time we had, two years ago, we did a panel on AR and VR. And you were at Samsung at the point at that time, and you were kind of blowing everybody's mind with your vision of the AR feature of the tabletop and sort of virtual, you know, like from out of Star Wars. So, but now you're at Twitter. So maybe give people an update on where on from Samsung to Twitter and sort of maybe what that connection is from the consumer electronics to social media. Um, well, thanks uh, first of all for uh, having me back, uh, um, and thank you for uh, for coming. Um, look, uh, I. Personally, I'm a big fan of technology. I'm a huge nerd, uh, and that should be should be enough. Um, I, I'm I'm a big fan actually for the of the platform that I'm working for. Uh, I wouldn't call it a dream job, but uh, very very close to it. At least it's not a dream job for my colleagues because they have to deal with me. Uh, but I, I noticed that uh, from from the previous job and and uh, and this one. The thing is that uh, whether you are a technology company as a phone manufacturer or you are a social media platform, you want to have uh, uh, content that uh, you want to give uh, to your users. Uh, so whether it's uh, the, the, you know, the company creating phone or creating a, a, a platform, uh, what, what are we going to use this, uh, this for? And, uh, and in, uh, in my role here at uh, Twitter, the idea is to um, engage all the uh, broadcasters, clubs, uh, athletes, uh, all the sports entities that uh, find value in uh, reaching out to their fans and um, kind of find ways to grow their audience, uh, grow their community and uh, in case also grow the monetization opportunities because uh, you know sport is a, an expensive business, yes. may I say that? Uh, Bastian, you want to tell a little bit about TMG and um, and what TMG is all about and why you guys are here exhibiting at the floor on, on Sport Hall? Yeah. Uh, Bastian Casalta, CTO at TMG. So we are a um, content monitoring and anti-piracy service provider. 
uh, we've been around uh, um, on the media market for 15 years on the sports market more recently five years from from now and uh, two years uh, in in asia so uh, we've been um, at Sportel for a number of times, so it's our second time uh, in Singapore. Um, here, meeting our, our various um, customers, so both sports organizations that uh, uh, we help to to protect the right and to value um, the right they sell to uh, to the platforms and uh, and uh, broadcast companies, as well as also we we have um, a lot of um, of um, TV operators that uh, use our, our service to to protect that content online. Great. So we're going to start with a very broad question. Uh, it's been two years since we've been here in Singapore. So what? A lot has changed in two years. So let's maybe some highlights of what you think has been going on in the OTT marketplace in the last in the last two years, uh, and since the last time we were here. So two years ago was 2016. Right. So uh, I think probably the the biggest uh, change in that period of time is just the number of companies that are actually launching. Uh, OTT services has grown immensely. Um, I can't, off the top of my head, uh, there's been some research, over 1,500 OTT services in the last 24 months have launched. So you have rights holders now uh, seeing an opportunity to go direct to consumer for a number of reasons. One, uh, they can connect with the viewer and the data that comes from that connection allows them to build their audiences more quickly. Uh, and the value of their content can also grow more quickly because of this growth um, and you know having an opportunity to distribute across a number of different platforms. Uh, I think video quality now is um, better than it's ever been. You know, and I would say it's better than traditional TV, uh, certainly with 4K live streaming and things like that. You get some really high video qualities. Uh, the ability to get on any kind of device, I think, is better than it's ever been. Uh, I also think the consumer now expects a very rich interactive experience on digital, uh, which is the starting point for uh, good OTT services. Uh, so over the last uh, two years, I think there's just been a rush of more and more services to connect directly to the consumer. So, so Danny, um, obviously at 11, you have this multi-platform approach, which, it's, which I think in the last two years has become the new reality. You know, you can no longer say, I'm a broadcaster, I'm an OTT, so everybody's got to do everything and reach everybody everywhere. So maybe what have you seen in the last two years here in the Asia market uh, as far as some of the big developments that are driving that? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, as Chris already was saying, um, on the, uh, not only in the Asian market, but globally, I mean, uh, a lot of rights holders and broadcasters have gone OTT. Um, at the same time, and, and, and that's of course also and, and the key point of today, uh, we've seen a, a very big rise in, uh, in piracy. Uh, for example, in Singapore, that, uh, that really killed our EPL proposition, where within a few months' time, we were able to build uh, a base with around 60,000 paying subscribers, which is significant and which was really a very good result for us. However, we needed around 100,000 to be break even. And uh, one thing was for sure, we would never get there with a high level of piracy. So um, I think it goes hand in hand. I mean, you see on the one hand, uh, a very big uh, increase in OTT offers, OTT usage, at the same time also a big growth in piracy. Well, let me ask you a piracy follow-up. So, and Chris, maybe you can jump on this too. Um, and Bashner, of course, as well. But do you, so you launched the service and you have some piracy issues. Do you feel that there's something that you didn't do right other than protecting things better or you know, did you price things wrong? What, do you, what did you think, were the things you could have done said, oh, if we had done this, we wouldn't have this piracy problem? Or is piracy always just a thing because people just love stealing things? Depends on the territory because, for example, in Poland, we, uh, we had some issues with piracy in the beginning as well, but we were able to really uh, counter that. Uh, and because of our pricing, a product which is really, really uh, tailored to the customer needs, uh, flexibility in terms of subscriptions, etc. So th all those things are key. However, you also need to, to have the cooperation of first of all rights holders, and second of all also the government. And this is something where what we discovered in Singapore, uh, which is not happening. Like here you can go to a normal retail shop and uh, you buy an, uh, an Android box 
and they openly advertise uh, watch EPL for free or watch Formula One for free or watch whatever for free and people think it's it's legal because they buy it in a legal shop they don't understand it's piracy and nobody is telling them so it's it's crucial that the whole chain is working closely together to fight against it and this is what we did in Poland and there we succeeded you say nobody's telling them so is it them the store the retailer or is it the person who it's uh, both yeah, yeah, but just don't chew gum and spit on the sidewalk. That's, right. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, with it, it's interesting with piracy that the NFL, NBA, for years dealt with piracy uh, around the quality of the video that was actually delivered over the top, because the free stuff didn't look good, or the pirated stuff didn't look good, and they kind of used the pirated uh, content as a way to market indirectly the value of Game Pass and League Pass. So as the video qualities got better and better, if you were really a fan of those sports, you preferred to watch and pay just because the experience was better. Um, <coughs> fast track to now, you have um, not only streams that get encrypted for uh, redirecting those streams, you now have the need from the EPL and others to put in <coughs> digital rights management, which uh, is a great way of uh, protecting the content, you got watermarking and all these other things that are happening. It does add a lot of complexity to how you deliver it, but it also acts as a safeguard. I don't know if the consumer is always uh, tolerant of uh, any service issues related to DRM as you switch browsers and devices and you're on Apple TV and now you're on your, your phone and then you go back to your computer and how keys get switched and I have to deal with consumers moving between devices uh, gets complicated. So they're not always um, happy that some of the issue is around copyright and, and uh, protecting the content. Right. But then you're fine, Danny, you're fine with the EPL. I mean, I guess it's the EPL product. So that's even with these provisions from the EPL to have this sort of safeguards, people are still getting around that Yes. in retail stores. Yeah. Okay. So Bastian, I mean, we were talking a little bit yesterday. So what's your sense, since I know this is your this is your expertise. Um, what can be done as far as piracy, and what do you see? And it's a big question. So let's start with just that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would like to to, to say to what Danny said about Poland and, and Singapore. Um, piracy has always been around and will never stop. So that the, the first the first thing we should figure out. Uh, the, the 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 thing uh, how we can react to that is a, a really good thing. And what you described about uh, the feature of the, the product in in Poland is definitely a very good answer. Um, Things are changing fast, so your first point was uh, what has uh, changing uh, since two years uh, in, in Asia uh, with OTT and piracy. So obviously, more uh, OTT platform due, due to the media rights sellers splitting the rights um, between broadcast and uh, OTT rights. So that was what um, started two years ago. So it, that is really uh, um, the, the case right now. So a uh, lot, lot more OTT players and. Um, what has, uh, what has changed in two years in piracy in Asia would be a crazy question because w watching piracy for a such a long period in Asia, things are changing every month, every week. It's very, very, very quick. So um, the, the, the Android box that you may buy in Singapore, maybe the next, the next month that they won't work anymore and you will need to renew your purchase and even um, not as a result as, a, as an anti-piracy program. That's very unstable. And um, what um, I believe um, is changing right now is that many people uh, start to understand that piracy is um, a competition to uh, the OTT experience. Um, I have um, uh, I, I was telling to the movie industry uh, industry long time ago that um, the streaming or downloading on on, on the, their movies online. Um, was um, an issue for uh, the, the home video uh, experience more than the, than the theater experience due to the fact that when you download something online you watch it at home so even if this is uh, uh, happening during the theater per window uh, this is still a competition to the um, to, to to the home video experience exactly the same with piracy and OTT uh, obviously at, at the start most of the broadcasters and right holders they were um, thinking about the broadcast right uh, value when they were seeing piracy but when you are consuming uh, on, a, on a internet piracy, um, obviously you're on your mobile phone, on your computer, eventually on your uh, TV screen, but still with a, a, an OTT service, that's a direct competition. And 
um, where we, when we are not able to remove uh, everything um, because of the um, complexity of the, the, the private organization, the, the, um, the legal boundaries that we, we found among the, the various territories, so um, collaboration from the government, etc. Um, it's really important that you create a, a real difference between the pirate experience, what the user can expect um, as um, buying a, a box or watching on a mobile app, and what he can get from the legal um, experience. So very high standard or quality of experience on OTT platform. That's probably the first and the best answer to the piracy program. So is there anything to be done to change just the the attitude, I mean, you said that piracy will always exist, so it's just, we just have to accept this, it will always exist, and there's anything to be done to change uh, perceptions other than keeping to increase the quality and go to 4K and, and a better experience that, uh, that is harder to pirate, I mean. That's, um, what we do at TMG um, is, uh, is um, fighting ag against um, piracy, w but looking at retail and investments. So, based on the fact that we cannot remove everything, um, it's important to spend the, the money and the energy on what um, will bring the customer to the legal offer. There is a huge trend currently uh, in Asia um, that, that is uh, piracy on social media. There's a lot of uh, things, um, so we have Twitter here, but uh, the major source of piracy on social media currently is Facebook Live uh, in, uh, in, in uh, most of uh, Southeast Asian territories. This is huge. And so we have great, great collaborations from the different um, social media, so uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, so bringing Instagram, Periscope, etc. With, with us, so they, 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 they provide us with uh, uh, great ways of uh, removing the, 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 the content pretty quickly, which is, uh, which is good. And when we are able to clean properly these places, um, we definitely believe that the, this type of users, they may go to the, um, go back to a legal offer. But the core user, the, 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 the guys that would buy um, uh, an IPTV box, an Android box, uh, potentially have a, a pirate subscription to it and get a good service uh, on it on the TV screen, even if you shut that down. So that's, that's a concern that the EPL should have. But from um, a notity platform pro uh, perspective, uh, is there a chance that someday this pirate will, will, will come back? So prioritizing uh, the, the, the effort and um, targeting the right, the right thing is, uh, is the key. Uh, so thing. Um, can you explain the Facebook Live? I mean, is, are we talking about people just holding their phone up in front of the TV set and recording it and streaming it out Facebook? Or is there something more complex that they're doing and even uh, quality? Some people will, will do the, the, this way. Um, but um, now the, these new apps, um, they, they are bring bring the capability to everyone to be its, its own pirate. So things are shown. Some people, they call this micro piracy, so you can share content instantly. So you have um, the, uh, let's say, the Eleven Sport app on the, on the mobile phone, so the, the legal one. Um, you just watch uh, an, an EPL game. Uh, you download on, uh, on the Google Play uh, Store uh, a very simple uh, light app, which, uh, for instance, is, would be called Camera FI. Uh, this app will connect to your Facebook account, will screencast what is on your Android phone, and you're live. <laughs> you're, you're now a pirate. You were not uh, thinking about being one a uh, minute, a couple of minutes before. So, so uh, and you're broadcasting to your f um, social media audience. So potentially some private. Um, uh, people, so things that will not be see, vi visible, especially on Facebook, um, and uh, and that's a real uh, a real threat because it's spreading everywhere in small communities. And if I am a fan of sports, um, I have a Facebook account. I I am not a pirate at all. I'm just um, following and liking a couple of uh, face Facebook's profile. So I don't know football teams, uh, tennis players, etc. Um, when there is a, a Facebook Live pirate stream, uh, the, you know, the, the Facebook algorithm um, um, re will recommend and put on your Facebook wall things that might interest you. So obviously, because you have this interest, the pirate stream that goes directly on your, on your Facebook wall, and when you scroll down, it starts automati automatically. So again, minutes ago, you were not a pirate, and now you're, you're, you're well, on. Not, and, and not to excuse the behavior, right. but do you think that, I mean, you talk about walking to a store and you buy a box that says you get the free pirate subscription, but 
do consumers not even know that they're necessarily being pirated? They're kind of like, well, if this is an app, it must be approved by Google, so therefore what I'm doing must be on some point legal, even though... I mean, well, I mean, that goes back to the point about the experience, right? Uh, to super serve a sport fan for any of the sports we're talking about, it's more than just streaming the video, right? There are all, all kinds of ways to interact with that experience. Live stats. Maybe you want to watch two matches at the same time. Uh, maybe you want to, uh, you know, with mobile now, the NBA has created all these overlays. So you're, you're watching on your iPhone a live NBA game, and with the swipe of your finger, you see the starting five players on the court. You see their pictures. You see their icon. You press your finger. You see their box scores and stats behind. You go to the right side of your phone. You pull out what's going on around the league. You drop back in. They have a thing called uh, uh, rapid replay. You click that. Who are the trending players right now? You can't pirate that. You can't pirate any of that. That's. I mean, the 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 stream itself. Yes. The experience around what you pay for. No. Yes. And and on top of that, also, um, it's very important to have a localized product. So local commentary, uh, local sports, which also makes a very big difference uh, versus piracy streams. Of course, in Singapore it's different because you, I mean, everybody speaks English, so you get just English streams in, but in, uh, for example, Malaysia or in, in whatever, it will be different. So the best defense might be a good offense to just sort of layer in better comments. Well, Danny's points are good because it go, just using the NBA again, they, there's, a, there's nine different language drop downs there. Yeah. So if you want to switch between English and, and wh whatever language of choice, you know, you can do that not only on a mobile device, a PC, a connected device. Again, you can't really pirate that. So Maurizio, time to bring you into the conversation with the Twitter. Um, so, you know, we obviously, we mentioned, Bastian mentioned the social media. So do you, is piracy an issue within the Twitter environment? Um, I know a lot of it is short characters and short videos, but what sort of th those issues related to your platform? Well, look, I think that uh, the um, I, I, I cannot speak uh, about the other uh, the other platforms, right? Uh, um, uh, I think that uh, we are doing uh, fairly well. Like uh, Vashan said, uh, uh, we ha we have tools in place that uh, allow broadcasters to be fairly safe. Actually, one of our tools is uh, widely used by broadcasters, leagues uh, all around the world to uh, post the clips in, in real time and uh, make sure that those uh, clips are not watched uh, outside of that specific territory. Actually, <coughs> to go back to, to the experience, I think, right? Uh, again, we are basically at, at the end of this uh, production ch chain, so we, we are really in front of the consumer, right? So it's not like we can do much other than protecting the investments of the broadcasters and the leagues, but uh, um, even to, when we take uh, the distribution of content and we make sure that, that the experience is, is pleasant, we actually don't even show the content to begin with. Uh, so I if that clip, the tweet can go anywhere in the world. So the, the, the idea is that Twitter is open to anyone. And uh, in all honesty, probably we are uh, almost late to the party when it comes to this because we had to face uh, these uh, this situation, uh, situations in which uh, how can we protect, uh, our, how can you protect our content? We are happy to embrace this uh, micro blogging platform that is very efficient uh, when it comes to what's happening, uh, lots of conversation, but uh, how can we be part of these conversations without infringing in, uh, in the existing uh, contracts, right? Uh, so basically, if you have uh, one of our tools, uh, like Snappy TV, for instance, if you produce that content and you tweet it out, and if, uh, if it is ab available globally, you simply over it, uh, autoplay goes, but if you are in Indonesia and that content cannot be played, actually fairly quickly, you don't even see the thumbnail. You, you simply see a gray box that says content is not available. You can still read what they are talking about, and then you move on, because that's, that's the experience that uh, we want to give people. Twitter is a, um, a lean forward experience. So you want to find out what's happening, what's going on, what's uh, relevant for you, for the rest of, uh, of the world actually, not for the rest of your friends. For the rest of the world, whether it's uh, 
uh, you know, the re revolution in Ukraine, whether it's the Oscars, whether it's the, f the, the World Cup, uh, what's, what is that people are talking <coughs> about? Uh? So if you, if you are not allowed to, to watch that, I'm not giving, even giving you the thumbnail and just move on. What's, what's going on? Oh, puppies, great. <laughs> that I can watch, but the World Cup I cannot. That's, that's fine. That's the experience that we give our, uh, our users. And this is a much deeper conversation about rights, but I think that the issue, though, is that if I, because I've had this problem when you go traveling anywhere, obviously we've all run into this problem of, of, of signing into a site that we go to from at home, and we're in a foreign country, and the content's not available, and the first thing you think about is, well, how can I, at least I do, how can I find this somewhere? You know, is there a way to find this somewhere? And I'll go hunting on YouTube, and the next thing you know, you're kind of creating a pirate by simply making them aware that they can't watch the content. So it's one of those interesting conundrums. Right, but, but again, now I'm, I'm speaking only from, from a social media, perspective, uh, social media platform perspective, right? Uh, so I think that uh, we want to share, uh, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, we want to share what we like. All the platforms have different uh, ways to enable us to share whether it's a picture, whether it's a video, whether it's a status, whether it's a mood, whatever it is, right? So, to Bastian's point, uh, I don't know, people will probably keep sharing. Uh, people will try to, it's not like everybody has a, an eye patch and they want to free the world and they are pirates. No, they are like, look, I'm watching this. If you guys want to, to watch it with me, here we go. They, they, they don't have this, I feel this deep uh, feeling that they are doing something anarchic or uh, something yeah, like that. Th right? That was my, my point, the, the yeah. fact that they don't even realize right, what they're exactly. doing. I'm sharing it. You guys want to watch it, that's great. It's, uh, you know, for us, it's, uh, it's, it's a point that we need to address and making sure that uh, if something arises, uh, how can we address it? That's it. So, so Marita, what do you see as the relationship between uh, social platforms and OTT services, and do you, you know, I know Facebook obviously has some looking for some big rights deals, and and but and uh, we do it too. Yeah, yeah. So, too. so, so what do you see? What is what is that relationship? I mean, how do you see it? Is there a harmony there? Is there a competition there? And Chris, maybe what's your sense? In sure. Best buddies. We are definitely no. Uh, seriously, the the thing is that uh, again, I'm talking only for for Twitter here because all social media platforms are different. You know, in my role, I, I get to talk to entities, like I said, broadcasters, athletes, clubs, uh, football leagues. And the thing that I say to them all the time is, use everything. Because uh, every different platform will suit a different need. So keep using Facebook, keep using uh, Snapchat, use Twitter better. That's the only thing, that, that's my entry point there, right? So when it comes to us, uh, I think that um, NBA, NFL, EPL, uh, uh, golf, uh, they are all benefiting uh, from the fact, uh, MLB, I, I, I meant to say, not, uh, not EPL, that's, uh, that's a different, uh, di different scenario, right? The American market is uh, structured in a different way compared to the other markets. So they are all benefiting from the fact that uh, they are posting uh, content that only a few years back uh, would have been restricted in their usage uh, by rights, uh, by contracts, right? Now instead, if uh, LeBron James gets ejected for the first time in 15 years uh, and you have uh, 25,000 views on Twitter, it's because people are talking about that. And people are like, the ref was right or the ref was not right. right? So they are, uh, they are leveraging the fact that people are watching something but at the same time, they are holding another device in their hands, whether it's a tablet, or whether it's a, a mobile phone, whether it's the laptop, it doesn't matter. But more often than not, they are watching something and multitasking. Am I on Tinder? Am I on Twitter? Am I on Snapchat? Uh, doesn't matter. It's, if there is something going on, they will come to a social media platform and they will start sharing their feelings, their moods, their gifts, their uh, emojis. So we are we 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 can help uh, I think uh, OTT players, uh, broadcaster, you know conventionals or uh, conventional ones or uh, like the 2.1 like 11 sports. They are doing a great job and I'm totally totally support of this approach, where uh, 
they are not only watching what you are broadcasting, but these guys are actually talking about it, right? Uh, so four years ago, 672 million tweets during the World Cup. Twitter was literally the largest football stadium in the world. They were all watching something and all talking about that at the same time. So why not leveraging that to um, drive more subscribers to your service? And we, we have this discussion all the time in our office. Every one of these events, all, what we can know about the World Cup is it's going to break the record from the last World Cup as far as streaming. I mean, this is just a reality of streaming minutes and streaming engagement just going to keep growing and exploding. And I guess, you know, from Danny, so how do you kind of manage the social aspect as a promotional tool for TuneIn? Uh, what's the challenge there as far as, and then even OTT? And yeah, I, I would not even say there's a challenge. I mean, for us, it's it's really uh, a very important part of our whole operation. I'm like, yeah, we had the Olympics here in Singapore. We did a lot on uh, on social media. Uh, we put a lot of, uh, of content on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, we're very close with, with Twitter, where, for example, in the US, uh, we did, uh, for a long period, every week, we had a Ivy League game live on Twitter. They were promoting it. Very good results. So we really, we really use it to, first of all, uh, increase the brand awareness, uh, reach new audiences, because for sure there are people who never, ever would, uh, would uh, watch us on, on cable or whatever, because they don't have a subscription. Uh, and, and also, I mean, drive OTT subscriptions. So as far as, uh, one of the big things in Asia is, you know, again, we have it in the title, piracy in Asia and OTT in Asia, but there is no Asia, really, when you look at it. There are a lot of very different cultures, very close together. You know, you fly an hour north, hour west, you got completely different economic situations. Um, what is the challenge as far as, again, with the piracy, uh, there's cultural, um, you know, cultural differences, there's pricing and what prices well, and. Manila, I mean, I was just a quick anecdote. You know, I went to the Philippines in a resort and they had massages for $30 an hour at this resort, which was amazingly cheap for an American, but then the people who lived in Manila thought it was way too expensive because in Manila they could get the massage for $6 an hour. So when you're trying to price things and your own cultural perspective says this is $5, that's cheap, it may be a month's salary. It's a good question. I mean, what we see in Asia, right now we support over, uh, I think we're up to 95 different currencies. So uh, when you go OTT and you want to go into a local market, local currency becomes very important. You don't want them doing the math of the conversion? Well, you know, if you're a U.S. company trying to sell OTT content in a local market here in Asia and you only accept uh, U.S. credit cards, that doesn't really work <laughs> well. So you have to be able to support a local currency. You have to be able to support a local payment method, which could be a payment method that's part of your you know, sell your phone bill, you know, as an OTT add-on. So local payment becomes key. You have to have a storefront that is in a local language. And oftentimes, if you can deliver the content with an audio overlay that's also local, all those things play into uh, better adoption in that marketplace. And then the last piece is pricing. So how you package content and price in different markets different content for different markets, maybe because of rights fees, yes. uh, different prices in different markets because of the economics that you just talked about. So you have to have the flexibility to not only sell locally, you have to have the flexibility to also package and price locally. If you can do all those things at the same time and get across all the devices and make sure you don't have any piracy, then things are good. <laughs> I'd like to add one more thing. Is What's also crucial is what we see is that you have a, a customer service in local language. Yeah, right, that, that responds quickly and, yeah. I guess that, that comes down to the, the, we talked about this at lunch a little bit, DRM, anytime you, any gating issue that creates a moment of uncertainty, either saying, well now, give us your cell phone number, we're gonna send you a verification code to kind of sign in, is immediately where you kind of open up the idea of, well, I'm just gonna steal this because it's easier. That's the friction, yeah. But that goes back to the experience again. If you're super serving the fan, and they are a big fan, right? The more, the better the experience you can create for that fan, the more tolerant they're going to be around any type of friction to get to that experience. Right. And a lot of these pirated sites look amazingly legit, and they are in a local language, and they, you know, they, you can't even tell that it is. It looks like the Apple Store, you know. People don't even understand this is not the iTunes Store. They, they just think that oh, this is, it looks so good, it must be legit. So, so I, I want to talk about to the the watermarking situation. 
because you know, bashing there's different pers- there's different approaches towards content protection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, is watermarking fail proof? What's the people always look at that as a great way to kind of uh, make sure you're you're ultimately protecting your content? What sort of what do you what do you see the strategy of watermarking versus other approaches? Uh, uh, I believe um, as so um, uh, OTT platform they are currently um, able to secure the fact that the people will not steal the content on their servers. So. DRM or all all, the, all these tools, so so this technology uh, is not mature. Uh, I would say that's a lot of restriction and complexity uh, to to implement. Watermarking is the next step. Uh, it tries to prevent people to redistribute the content uh, that they record or rip from uh, from the platforms. Um, so uh, there are some first um, implementation around and the uh, technology uh, from. A, Paper point of view look, looks great. Uh, it's you know, the, so watermarking is, is supposed to uh, give the ability to a um, monitoring uh, platform like us. Maybe explain. Yeah. Not everybody knows a watermark. They, they they use the phrase without knowing exactly what it is. So what is a watermark? So a watermark is something that you add in in the video content. So it can be visible or invisible. So um, when um, and so the thing that is added on at the on the at the on the OTT player of the platform includes uh, um, an ID that represents your subscription ID on the, on the platform. So if we, uh, as the monitoring platform, we, when we detect the, the watermark, we, we find the ID, we can integrate with the OTT platform and shut down your account. Ultimately, right. shut down the stream live and have a, uh, have a take down result uh, on Send the internet. The <laughs> that's the dream, that, that's the full thing. So there are major um, issues to, 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 to do this full workflow. First thing, um, what I'm asking is a, it's quite an expensive uh, technology. It's come also to, to the, the implementation the, uh, complexity. Um, and uh, when you invest in, in that, uh, you need to be sure that you will get a return on, on investment. And Speaking about Asia, we have some pirates that are really working uh, uh, on uh, removing watermarks from, from, from the streams. And there's a lot of implementation, especially uh, there's a group in Thailand that uh, is, uh, is uh, providing a software that is dedicated to that. So you, yeah, I, won't, I will not explain today the, the full trick, but uh, the, 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 there are ways to, to, to remove the marks. And, and that's a well, there, it's different with live events, because if, if you're watching a UFC event and it's a live event, you pay 60 US dollars to watch it on any device. What we do as a service is we, the operator controls exactly when you push that red button to put that key up. So when the key goes up on the screen, it goes up on every pirate screen at the same time. So all the pirate sites, you see that key, you go back to originally bought that ticket, and that's where you shut the guy down, which shuts everybody down behind him. So it's very difficult to forecast when we're going to push that red button. It's not like it's pasted there for the entire five hour UFC event. We watch the pirate sites come up, we get ready, we push the key out, the key goes out, boom, it's up there 1001, 1002, it's like two seconds. You see it back on all the rebroadcasted screens. You go back to the person that bought it, oh, it's Ken, he bought it, turn Ken's machine off. But yeah, the, the, uh, what, what we see is that the pirates, they are, they are um, very creative um, and pr- probably very smart uh, to, to, to find ways to, to, to remove the mark. Um, what, what, what is good in, in what you just described is the fact that it's tempor- temporary, unpredictable, potentially dynamic, moving, yeah. etc. That's the, the, the way uh, it should be implemented to, to make it work. And then we would work with companies like you that go find the pirates. Absolutely, yeah. Any questions or comments? Anybody dealing with piracy issues in the audience? Anybody? Are there any pirates in the room? Anybody, any pirates in the room? <laughs> Kieran has his moments, I know. So as far as, so Chris, I think one of the things that also has happened in the last two years is, um, if you go back three or four years ago, when the OTT stuff was first starting, a lot of people would get involved with it and try to you know, put together their own systems and their own workflows, right? Because there, it, was, it was a nascent marketplace and they would look around and they say, well, it's, it's easier for us to try to do this ourselves. And now we're in a situation where with the proliferation of devices and the piracy issues and the demand. So maybe a little bit of the, not only for your own company, but other companies that are sort of in your space, if you will, that kind of come in and sort of do the whole thing from a holistic perspective. What do you see as sort of the... Well, I think that yeah, you, over time, I think you've seen the licensing of products to construct an OTT platform 
that you run yourself with your content to a marketplace now that has New Lion and others that help run a managed service for you. Uh, and the reason for that is the complexities of all the things we've been talking about um, have just got the more moving parts. You have a consumer that wants to be able to watch things on any device. You have a consumer that wants to be able to see that in really high quality. They want to see it interactive. So all the, the whole experience side of things, then you add, you add in the complexity of content protection. Uh, in all these moving parts, the question for companies that own content or own content rights is are they a technology company and a media company? Or do they want to partner with somebody that can help them on the tech side so they can focus on content and marketing? Which is really the, the piece now that I think is the next phase, is how do you use data and how do you market, how do you find subscribers, how do you keep them? Uh, and that in itself, we haven't spent any time on, is a challenge. To also be worrying about the next version of Xbox and do you have the right codec settings you know, are you monitoring how you're doing it in coding and is your video workflow, I mean, folk, it, it, so you have to kind of make that decision. Are you a tech company or are you a media company? And I think uh, today it's more complicated to try to do both at the same time. So for the MBA, for example, they can take, instead of taking resources dedicated towards the technology side, which they used to have a lot of resources, obviously, in, in their facility dedicated, they can sit there and say, look, let's focus on media and the sort of overlay content that Makes it yeah, how do we experience. find more fans? How do we keep the fans? What kind of content do our fans want to watch? You know, those questions are big questions. Uh, to, try to, to try to do at the same time worrying about six, seven different technology companies that you also have to manage, you have to implement, you have to try to find ways to integrate those technology. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's challenging. So I think in the space today around managed services for OTT, there is an opportunity to get less complicated, focus on your core strengths, and go build audience. Right. And Mauricio, so similarly on the social side, what I find for like our own company when we're dealing with publishing to social media platforms, there's a lot of tools out there that third-party tools that are designed to make it easier to publish content to multiple social platforms at one point in time. But you mentioned that <clears throat> internally within Twitter, you have your own sort of back-end tools that are sort of you, you work with on a on a case by case basis, so maybe explain that a little bit for people who may not be working with you currently. In that yeah, we 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 work uh, we, with our preferred partners, uh, you know, leagues, athletes, and so on and so forth. Uh, we we want to give them, uh, um, I would say, uh, better data, th so that they have a better understanding of uh, who's doing what on the platform but also better tools to reach out and engage uh, their audience. So um, if they wanted to have one of their athletes uh, reaching out to fans or uh, one, they want to host uh, uh, the press conferences live and stream it uh, over the platform and so on and so forth, we can work with them ad hoc uh, and establish this, uh, once we establish this relationship, and deliver these uh, these um, these opportunities. So, for instance, again, it's, it's not something new, meaning that we are the only ones that have this. But we do have uh, a certain array of opportunities uh, if you want to to take uh, the the full uh, HD feed uh, and broadcast it over Twitter. Come talk to us. We'll set it up for you. Start using it, and no problem. Uh, if you want to have one of your uh, uh, talents um, having uh, live Q&A sessions with the fans one-on-one, -on -one, uh, come talk to us. We can give you a special app that uh, will collect all the, the tweets around uh, that, uh, uh, that conversation. Uh, those questions will be and will be made available to, to, the, ta to the talent. The talent will, use, uh, will select uh, which uh, tweets um, he or she wants to answer and then uh, it will tweet it out will tweet out uh, a video message directly to the guy that uh, that actually asked the question carrying uh, uh, the Twitter handle uh, the question itself uh, and so on and so forth this kind of uh, you know to go back to to the experience part of things right 
why should you use this uh, this platform? Because we actually have people talking to you one on one, and it, it's kind of, you know, uh, I would freak out if uh, if uh, if uh, one of my favorite player would retweet would tweet it back at me and say, hey, Maurizio, yeah, I think that you don't understand squat about football. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't ask that question. So it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of a deal. And, uh, and that's where, where we want to go. We want to find these opportunities so that people get engaged uh, and then they start sharing it. And there's value for everyone, for the league, for the players, for the platform, for the brands associated to that. And how does one become a preferred partner? Is it an invitation-only thing, or do they, can they find you? Kind of, you know. No, come on. We we have a we have a team of people. I I'm I'm part of uh, I'm part of uh, within the organization. My team is called the Global uh, um, Content Partnerships, uh, and then we have entertainment, news, and uh, and sports within within that group. And uh, we we have people like me going out there and uh, reaching out to to the sports entities and. Uh, to the media entities, actually, and uh, find out whether they are interested in doing more. Because again, I, I haven't found anyone that is not on Twitter so far. Uh, it's more about uh, what can we do more. Like uh, like Danny said, right? Uh, we want to do more on Facebook. We want to do more on Twitter. We want to do more across all platforms because this is good for business. So, how can we, as Twitter, help you do more on this platform? And the benefits will. Uh, will happen eventually. One of the things I'm, I've always considered on the, that the next generation of the social experience is to, you know, it's great to sit there and say, well, we're the NBA and this is our official Twitter handle. But that's one relationship that is trying to, that's one entity, if you will, that's trying to build a relationship with hundreds and thousands of different types of user groups that in an ideal world would have a more personalized Twitter experience. You know, like if a 55-year-old person is in charge of your Twitter account, they're probably not going to be able to really be posting attractive comments to a 12-year-old or a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old. So what, what do you see is, on yeah, on the content side, as far as this, this challenge of building a better relationship with fans of a different, they're all different. They're not one age. And even, you know, do you hire a 17-year-old to do your Snapchat? Well, that's why the NBA, though, that's why Adam Silver lets all the players tweet, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Real, yeah. So the NBA is a perfect example of a sport entity that really embraced Twitter. So it, before uh, they, they, they get all uh, the draftees, they say, look guys, you are going to be part of an amazing league. Be yourself, this is what Twitter can do for you. Not only Twitter, but this is what Twitter can do for you. As long as you don't tweet from the bench during a game, you are good to go. But uh, to your point, be, be in mind that uh, the way Twitter works for a, uh, for, for a user is I start following people that I like. So if I like the NBA, probably, you know, unless they literally stop publishing video, probably I, I'll be, I'm happy with the, with the output uh, that they have, right? If I start following a political, unless they start talking about sport, I'm happy with the, the output that they have. So we, we I, I feel like, uh, you know what you are uh, about to get. Uh, now in the past year, we also have an algorithm that selects uh, in case you missed something uh, from your friends or from the people that you follow or from the conversations that are trending. This is, uh, this is also something that uh, actually helped uh, uh, the engagement on the platform. But uh, I think that overall, uh, uh, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, uh, usually you get what you want when when you follow when you follow an, some an entity that is publishing and using a social media platform. So that's why, as long as they keep on publishing, uh, we are good to go. They are good to go. So, so, so Danny, last question to you. Um, you mentioned the the EPL rights and having sixty thousand subs, but you wanted to get a hundred thousand subs. So, what do you see is the what is the risk here of for a rights valuation of piracy to really kind of eat away at rights. No, rights have never really gone down yet, although I guess the EPL within the UK, the BT and Sky both paid less than they did the last time. So is there an issue here with piracy and a risk for the leagues and the federations? In Singapore? Uh, just in the world in general. Uh, we're in Singapore. 
uh, is Singapore yes. <laughs> um, and that's what you see. I mean, if you look at, at both um, uh, cable IPTV platforms, Singtel and Starhub, they are losing subs yeah. as on a significant level month over month. Um, so there definitely is an impact from piracy. They are fighting hard against it now, but I mean, the, the local regulator does nothing against it. Uh, in other territories, I'm not so sure. I mean, it all it all depends on 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 how, as I said before, how everybody in the value chain works together. Yeah. Do you feel Do you feel that the federations and the leagues are doing are doing their fair share, if you will, in dealing with piracy? Yes, some. Uh, La Liga is very active in, on it. Uh, EPL uh, has become very active on it. Um, I think UFC is quite active on it, and 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 I mean there will be others as well who are active. But I mean it's it, it's crucial. So for the Singaporean government, then how does any how does somebody make them notice and wake up, if you will? Is it the leagues? Do they get excited if the league comes? No, I think their everybody. <laughs> everybody has been knocking on their door for <laughs> for a long time. Right. And they're not opening up. Great. Any last comments on? Uh, and obviously, we'll continue this conversation tomorrow if people are around. A little bit deeper dive on strategies, on on really kind of getting started with marketing and sort of setting up an operation. Um, any final thoughts on? That's, I think it's a great time if you own content or own content rights. Um, it's uh, it's just the opportunity to distribute content now uh, is better than it's ever been. Yeah, there's all, you, it, it, while it does seem like there's a lot of problems, it, you always you always forget the ability to be able to watch. I mean, I was watching a Yankees game in the subway in New York City, and I was I had to step back and be like, this is very Pretty cool. cool. You know, so. Well, thanks everybody for sticking around, and thank you guys for your time. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the show floor. There's still some more time to visit their booths and stands. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.